And welcome back to the second British Army update. Uh, filmed directly after the first. Um, with uh, just a memory card change. Because for some reason I've only got 2 gig uh, memory cards for this uh, video camera. Um, okay, so let's start straight away. Like I say, we've got um, this infantry section here. A... Um, a group of six men, um, five of which, uh, or rather, um, six of which are the remainder of the plastic box set, and uh, that being the reason because we have a metal NCO in this particular squad, um, and also one vehicle. So, let's go straight into it. Again, a, another standard British infantry section of ten men. Um, we'll start with the NCO. Uh, this NCO is a metal miniature and it came in the British Command Pack. And I thought that this would make a great NCO for a squad and that's what I made him. So this guy uh, is the NCO for this particular uh, infantry section. And you can see that the detail on this uh, metal miniature is, uh, in comparison to the plastics, uh, a lot better basically. Um, but at the same time, you know, the plastics are good, but there's just something about the metal, it's like the detail is just much crisper, and uh, the, the sort of the packs are just that little tiny bit more chunkier, and they just look better. Um, but this guy is like, he came out really well, he's like the perfect position for an NCO. A uh, little bit of a, you know, not pointing, but kind of heading towards a point perhaps or more gesturing, um, kind of looking a bit grumpy, uh, yeah this guy's perfect for the, for the part, and I think he came out pretty good, he's got his uh, his red teacup there, more sort of terracotta colour, and uh, again he's got his rank uh, insignia, and of course the uh, shoulder insignia and uh, his other rank uh, insignia there. So that is the NCO. And let's go on with the infantry. Again, these guys, I try and differ the positions as much as I can, but there's only so much you can do with these guys. Um, the, the kind of thing that, that sort of annoyed me a little bit about these plastics is that there's only like one rifle at rest position. Um, I, would have, I would have preferred there to be kind of two, to tell the truth. Um, there's, I mean, this position's okay, but I, I sometimes like to have my rifles pointing down a little bit further, and um, the sort of the way that the arms are designed to sort of uh, sit against the shoulder, um, like the more you bend it down, the more that sort of shoulder would like slightly start separating from the arm, from the actual body rather. Um, so this is basically like the standard pose of of, of, that, of that particular arm set. You could raise it to be a little higher, but that looks a bit odd. So this is, you could say, your A standard typical plastic warlord uh, infantry pose. And of course, again, like my all my armies, these guys are named and given ranks. So let's continue. So here we have a again a sort of a, a rifle. Um, thrusting position, or well, this guy just looking a bit mean. Um, quite a nice pose. Uh, I'm not a massive fan of, of uh, rifle rifle bayonets on my guys. Um, obviously the, the Japanese uh, uh, kind of warrant it, but uh, as for other nations, uh, I'm not a big fan. Um, even in my marine army, I think there's only two or three in the entire army that have got bayonets out on their rifles. Um, and particularly the sort of Lee Enfield bayonet being more or less just a, uh, a sort of a plug-on bayonet. It's not even, you couldn't really class it as a proper bayonet. It's, it's almost as if it's like a musket bayonet. It's just basically like a, a sharp spike that fit, fits over the, the sort of a, the actual uh, um, barrel. So that is the uh, first infantryman, and you can see he's got sort of a standard backpack with the grey bedroll, 
or the bed sheet. And next up, we have another uh, posed uh, with the bayonet guy. Uh, this is mainly due to the fact that there's not many uh, actual Lee Enfield rifles within within the weapons sprue. Um, I think there's only f four or six uh, without bayonets, and then another four with bayonets. Um, and I think you get three weapon sprues. Um, so there's only like twelve. Uh, um, I think there's only six. Uh, six unbayoneted uh, Lee Enfields and four bayoneted. Um, so that's ten in total, but uh, four with bayonets. And you can see that this guy has the standard helmet with the just the netting on. Again, the uh, shoulder insignia. And he's got the teacup, and he's got one of the general purpose shovels. Next up we have a slightly different posed uh, guy. I think I made this pose up myself by mixing and matching some arms. Uh, quite like this pose. He's kind of uh, advancing. Uh, rifle at the ready. And I've given him an extra uh, ammo bandolier. And this guy is actually the uh, Bren section leader. Um, and he's got the uh, camouflage style helmet with the burlaps, the burlap uh, inserts into the net netting. Quite a cool pose. And uh, semi grimacing face there. Might as well do the rest of the Bren sections here when I picked them up. Um, this time we have a kneeling Bren gunner. And you can see that I've, because there's no Molded ammo pouches on this guy. I've given him the two extra ones up top uh, to, and also sort of create the, create the illusion that there's two below it. But there's no real room to fit any un under the tail tree. And there he is, quite, quite a good, uh, quite a nice pose uh, kneeling. Again, that rather really nice fitting Bren hand. And the same sort of support arm. You can see it works secretly well standing or kneeling. Uh, one of the big pluses of the British Art Infantry box set, of course, is that there's no prone figures. I, uh, we all know how much I love uh, plastic prone figures, and these guys haven't got any, which so that just that alone makes me very happy. And finally, the number two for the Bren section. And we can see this guy has the moustached face. So maybe this guy's a little bit old, a little bit older. And he's got this accessory pack and he's got the general standard issue uh, pickaxe. And he's got the sort of standard helmet without anything on it. Continuing on, we have another uh, bayoneted uh, infantryman. So this unit has actually got three bayoneted guys in it. And uh, again, sort of a thrusting pose. I mean, there's not much you can say about the, these guys really. They're all kind of, I mean, they're all basically the same uh, set of core figures throughout every sprue. So there we have, uh, who is this guy, should we, should we see who he is? There we go. And two more to go. So here we have a rifle firing pose, I believe this is. Uh, again, I've given him the extra ammo bandolier. Uh, I think I've probably used more of those extra rifle bandoliers on the British than I have uh, on any of the other armies that, that have them. Um, I think only the the US Marine Corps and the Americans uh, have those available to them and uh, I've definitely used more of my British, um, mainly because of experience. I've always had trouble trying to fit them to look 
you know, actually fit them to the figure to make them look decent. And uh, I think, you know, maybe finally I've uh, sort of got the hang the hang on, uh, put them in the right position. But I'll definitely be using them more in the, in the uh, future. Uh, here we have the last guy. This guy, again, a custom pose. Really like it. Looks like he could be uh, either about to or just uh, locked the bolt on his rifle. And uh, ready to raise it to uh, take a shot. Really like this pose. It came out, uh, took a you know, bit of fiddling around to sort of match the arms up. But I really do like this pose. Uh, probably my favourite pose of all my plastic miniatures so far. Um, again, sort of the standard plastic gear that these guys have. And of course he's got his shoulder insignia. And he's got the camouflage star helmet. Yeah, I like this guy a lot. And there's his name. These names are all randomly uh, generated again. Okay, that is the f uh, second squad uh, of my British Army. Uh, next up, uh, we will do the um, next up. We'll do the vehicle to break it up, and then we'll finish off with the odd infantry that were left from the box set. And this vehicle uh, is um, it's kind of designed for fighting earlier war. Uh, battles, um, alas, it's desert scheme, um, but for the moment it's kind of in my army. Um, again, I decided to I wanted like an earlier war tank in my army, and I managed to get this for a really cheap price. Um, so I said, yes, what the hell, I'll, I'll put it in my army. And even though it's, you know, probably more or less defunct, um, it's, uh, it's a really nice model. And uh, I want to use it, so I painted it up in desert desert colours. Came out really, really well. I've even put it in sort of desert wrap uh, um, designation. And uh, of course, my classic um, magnetising the turret, like I do on all my resin vehicles. And like I say, it's a really nice model. It was, it came in. Um, like one, this whole body section came as one. It wasn't like you didn't have to stick the tracks on, which was really cool. Um, the only sort of downside to that, there was a lot of sort of uh, resin flash in between these gaps along the tracks. Um, and it was kind of annoying to try and get out, but I think in the end it turned out really well and um, it saved a lot of time uh, painting and all that sort of stuff, uh, not having separate tracks. And uh, I'm really happy with how it came out. It's uh, you know, it was it's kind of a it was a hard decision to to, to decide to paint it in desert colours when it's not really a desert themed army, but um, you know, it's uh, it came out really well. It looks it still looks pretty cool in in, in with some miniatures, and uh, it may not be very effective, but uh, it's the second platoon tank for for now. You know, until I decide to uh, replace it with something. So I was kind of happy with that. Uh, so that's the Valentine, well, it's a Valentine 2 tank, but I believe it's a Valentine 3 uh, actual designation for sort of like the later war. Um, still equipped with its two pounder uh, underpowered anti tank gun and a coaxial machine gun. Um, of course, the slightly later uh, marks uh, of this tank were upgraded to have a six pound anti tank gun. Uh, but lost the machine gun, so I suppose you could proxy and proxy it as as one of those uh, sort of heavier um, Mark Ten. Well, I believe the Mark Ten actually did have a um, a coaxial machine gun actually added to it. Um, but yeah, that was uh, so. That's the uh, Valentine two, and finally we have the odd six miniatures uh, which complete the first um, my first infantry box set. And these guys are basically like specialist teams. Um, we have the uh, a lieutenant and a uh, NCO figure. I'll start with the lieutenant. Um, this guy, uh, I've got some desert pigment on my uh, 
finger there from the tank. Um, this guy is the lieutenant and of uh, my first platoon, and it's a plastic miniature, but he has a metal head. Uh, I decided to add one of the, the metal heads from one of my other uh, metal sets that I've got. Um, and I, I quite like this guy. He, he's a, again, he's in a sort of a generic pose, but uh, I quite like the way he's kind of like holding his rifle and um, sort of, you know, pointing something out uh, with his binoculars there. And he's got his pistol, and I've given him his uh, his rank pips, the two silver rectangles of a, of a lieutenant or, le or lieutenant rather, and, and British British uh, way of saying things. And again, I kind of Due to space restrictions, I couldn't really fit uh, an ammo pouch in there, so I kind of just managed to fit one in. Came out really good. I, I really do like this guy. Um, um, I generally, I try and um, make my lieutenants uh, matter if I can. But in this circumstance, I thought, well, um, you know, I, I don't really want to save five miniatures to make a, another infantry section. Um, so I'll try and uh, do the best I can with them and ended up making the sort of a command team, um, a sniper team and a, a light mortar team out of them. So here we have uh, the lieutenant's helper, um, the units, the section sergeant, and there's his stripes. And of course given him the classic sergeant grimesque looking head um, to make him look like somebody you don't want to uh, rub up the wrong way. And he's got his pistol and all the sort of standard gear that a, um, a British infantryman would have. Uh, and he's got his sten, of course. Um, and the rather cool sten holding hands, um, which I do actually quite like, uh, kind of holding the, the gun ready, at, ready to fire sort of thing. So yeah, I'm kind of happy with uh, the way that sky turned out. Next up, we have a sniper team, again made out of plastic guys, and I was quite chuffed with how these guys turned out. So here we have the number one, um, basically ready to take the shot with looking through his scope, and this guy, I kind of wanted him to be more of a unit marksman rather than a outright sort of off on his own camouflage smock, etc, etc type sniper. Um, so this guy's kind of like, you know, the, the best shot on the unit that was designated to be the marksman um, being given a sniper rifle and uh, kind of part of the command team um, and gets, you know, sent off to, to do, you know, maybe do a bit of scouting and um, to generally be like the unit marksman. And I've given him uh, bandoliers um, to kind of, two jobs really, A, to give him more ammo and B to kind of hide the fact that there's no ammo pouches there. Um, but I was kind of happy with how it turned out. I've also given him a pistol. And other than that he's got the sort of standard infantry gear. Um, I was quite happy with this, how this guy turned out. I managed to, to angle his head and uh, wiggle the arms around to get them into a, a really nice position so that it actually looks like he's looking through the scope. And uh, there's kind of like enough shadow there to, to actually uh, you know, make him look like he is actually properly aiming down the rifle scope. Very happy with how he turned out. Um, and his number two uh, here, um, again, you know, pr pretty basic pose, but uh, you know, I managed to um, find a pouch off one of my, I believe it's a Japanese pouch, to use as a binocular pouch, and. Uh, he has actually got some uh, ammo pouches there, and again, other than that, just the standard sort of gear. And I mean, I believe this guy's actually just supposed to have a pistol, but um, we all know in real life that the uh, spotter would have a um, a normal rifle, um, and uh, he probably would have a pistol as well. So I've given him his uh, correct. He hasn't. He hasn't actually got a pistol moulded, but uh, he could, it could be like tucked into his belt or something. But this guy is, uh, is armed with a rifle, as far as the miniature goes. And finally, 
um, we have a light mortar team. Um, I didn't. I don't actually have a uh, an 81 millimeter mortar in my British Army. Um, I'm kind of mortared out. I've, I'm kind of fed up with mortars. Um, my next army, um, which I'm going to do, is uh, going to be French, and I've got a mortar in those, a mortar team in that. Um, so I'm kind of. I wanted to go for a change and not have a mortar, um, but you know mortars are pretty useful. So I thought, well, a, a British command section would have a, would have a light mortar section attached to it. So um, I would mould a light mortar team out of um, the parts that are within the uh, <coughs> excuse me the infantry set. You can see that it's moulded uh, actually in, in through the backpack, and I used uh, the Piat. Uh, ammo boxes to act as an ammo carrier for the mortar shells because I can't really see a reason why it can't be dual purpose. Um, you know, it's possible that you might be able to fit. Uh, um, uh, maybe you might be able to fit six rounds in there because um, they are pretty small rounds, um, but probably only three. Uh, but it's still, a good way of carrying uh, ammo. Uh, and I couldn't actually find a reference picture of a um, of an actual mortar box. Uh, although, to tell the truth, I didn't really look very hard. Uh, but you can see that this guy is uh, the rank of uh, Lance Corporal. Or is he a Corporal? Actually, he might be a Corporal. He's a Corporal. And he is the Firer. The Mortar Number One, who is an, an NCO. So I made him a Corporal. And the Number Two, uh, the Loader. Uh, this guy would uh, probably be carrying a lot more than just three rounds, um, but just in, in the case of the figure, he's, he's carrying three rounds, but he'd probably be carrying maybe two or three boxes of ammo. Um, and uh, I was quite, I was very happy with the way that these kind of positions worked out. Um, and I think together they they look kind of cool as uh, as the actual uh, mortar team. You can see them there. They're kind of in almost like a duplicate pose, but not quite. I think they came out quite cool. So that is the um, the odd men from that particular box set. Uh, and that concludes uh, this army update. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please subscribe if you wish to be kept up to date when I release new videos. And please like if you like, and feel free to comment. Um, and look out for the next update which will probably be in a week or two again because I'm actually quite ill at the moment um, I can't actually use my hand properly I can only burn my fingers like to there um, although I can paint for short periods um, the guys, I'm painting like six guys at the moment and they're, they're taking uh, a lot longer than uh, they normally would um, but they are getting there slowly so probably my next update will be that that sort of group, which are mainly um, artillery observers and uh, um, the medic and, and bit people from the command squad. Uh, so until then, um, I'll catch you next time.